Good morning. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Once again, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has awakened us by the power bestowed upon him from the Father to be Lord over all that exists. Thank you, Father, for your Son. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming into my life, saving me, loving me before I even knew how to love myself, creating an opportunity for me to know you, my creator. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning to confess that you created us, that you created all that exists, that you are all powerful, that there is none above you, and that all are below you. We give you honor, we give you praise. We thank you, Father, for your mercy. We thank you, Father, for your grace. We thank you, Father, for caring for us so tenderly, so lovingly, so patiently, Father, we declare our love for you. We love you, Father, because you are right, you are good, you are light. And you remove the darkness, the fear, the anger, and all that is negative from our life when we dwell with you. Father, I pray that I dwell with you all day to day never stray from you, that I am in your will, that I am doing your will, I'm walking the way that your son walked, and I pray, Father, that I encourage others to know the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of all. I pray this lesson encourages and blesses in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I am excited this morning. My cold is better. The kids are better. Thanksgiving is on. And we going to do it. So this morning our daily devotional is titled, The Lord Delivers. We're starting a new lesson this week. And it's titled, Instructions for Spiritual Warfare. Our daily devotional is from the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verses 1 through 10. And in my Bible, Psalms 34, it says, David praises God and exhorts others thereto by his experience. They bless who trust in God. A psalm of David when he changed his behavior before Abimelech who drove him away and he departed. <clears throat> uh, it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O taste, and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man 
that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Praise God. Praise God. David was preaching to himself and to anyone who would hear about the goodness of the Lord our God. Our God is a good God. He can be depended on. He can be trusted because he loves us. He loves us exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could imagine. <clears throat> We're starting a new lesson today. Lesson 13, titled Instructions for Spiritual Warfare. The central truth of this lesson is that God provides the resources we need for spiritual victory. God provides the resources we need for spiritual victories. Victories. Focus. Our focus is to aim, affirm, excuse me, affirm the reality of spiritual warfare and stand against the devil's schemes. We need to focus on the fact that there is a spiritual warfare going on around us. And the warfare, the prize for this war is our soul, our very soul. God is fighting for us. And if we will draw nigh to him, we'll be protected. Our evangelism emphasis is that Christians should be bold witnesses. Be bold. Declare the goodness of God to who ever, whoever. The golden text says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And that's from the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Okay, our commentary says, Ephesians 6 contains perhaps the clearest definition of of spiritual warfare in the New Testament. It is a call to arms. As Christians, we are in a battle against opponents who are stronger than us. This chapter not only teaches us there is a spiritual war, but that apart from utilizing the weapons God has provided for us, we are hopefully underpowered if we plan to win the battle we must rely on provisions and resources beyond human capabilities verses 10 through 17 tell us what our divine weapons are these weapons also imply the nature of the struggle we are in. The weapons God has provided for us repel, repel the attacks of Satan. Thus, we can learn a great deal about the nature of Satan's opposition from studying each of these weapons. Ron Phillips writes, Satan comes at us directly. Through the world system in which we live and through our flesh. With God's armor, we can fend off the attack of our enemy. Point one. With our belt and breastplate, we have integrity and identity in Christ, Satan cannot attack our character. Point two, with our shoes and shield, 
we have balance and belief, Satan cannot penetrate our commitment. Point three, with our helmet, we have assurance and anticipation of the good things of God. Satan cannot destroy our confidence. James 4 and 7 tells us, Res resist the devil and he will flee from you. Defensive weapons can hold off Satan, but only offensive weapons can cause him to flee. God has supplied such a weapon in the sword, the sword of the spirit. God has supplied just such a weapon in the sword of the spirit. <clears throat> Section one, prepare for spiritual warfare. A wily enemy, Ephesians chapter six, verses 10 and 11. And it reads, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The commentary says proper preparation is key to prosecuting or Pro-securing a successful war. One aspect of preparation is to know the enemy's capabilities and limitations. Paul describes the devil as a wily enemy. The word wiles indicates trickery, cunning, and deception. The devil attacks believers at their most vulnerable point and often pretends that he is a friend, not the devil. See 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. To begin their spiritual battle, the Ephesians must recognize the need for strength beyond their own an assured sense of victory must not be used as an excuse for an in inaction. Believers cannot speak of winning the victory where there is never a fight. The phrase power of his might, Ephesians 6.10 brings together words for power previously used in 1 and 19 and 3. At 16 through 21, the Ephesians would have understood the implications. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, 1 and 20, and brought the Ephesians to life when they were dead in trespasses and sin, chapter 2, verse 1, is now available to them for spiritual warfare. There can be no doubt about its adequacy. Believers are to clothe themselves with the armor God provides. It is a complete outfit because the soldier must be fully protected. Okay? A wily enemy. Know your enemy. Know he's full of trickery and cunning and deception and that he's trying to deceive you and turn you away from God. As long as you stay in the will of God, you have victory. You have total victory. And Satan is trying to turn you from that. Resist him and he must flee. Okay, section two or section B, 1B, a spiritual struggle. This is from verse 12. And it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. High places. That's Satan. The commentary says, Paul does not call believers to enter into spiritual warfare. Instead, he announces it as a fact. The fact that our battle is not against flesh and blood is loss for those Christians who put all their efforts in that direction. Paul's idea here is much the same as in 2 Corinthians 10.3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Our battle is against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil. See Ephesians 6 and 12. These spiritual forces are all part of a spiritual army that is organized and established into ranks under the headship of Satan, who comes again against us with his wiles. In order for us to fight victoriously in these spiritual wars, we must understand our enemy, wrote David Griffins. Paul warns us not to be ignorant of his devices. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. It is important to understand him, his past, present, and future. We should have a knowledge of his purpose, his techniques, and power, as well as his limitations, his weaknesses, and fears. The wording of verse 12 of the text indicates a continuing struggle. To wrestle means to come into hand-to-hand -hand conflict, usually extended over a period of time. There's never a time we can feel that the problem of spiritual warfare has been won once and for all. And I'd like to add, until Jesus comes and sends Satan to hell, that's when we can relax and enjoy the goodness of God without um, the wiles of the devil interfering in what God has for us in our lives. There's an insert here that says, don't live in fear. I'd like to read this. It says, a believer who overestimates Satan's power can live an entire lifetime in fear. Always terrified of what Satan might do. Satan likes nothing better than to stir up that kind of fear in a believer because it destroys his effectiveness for the Lord. That was written by George Sweetie. And I might add, It, it diverts us from looking for the will of God in our life. God has a call for our life. And he promises to walk with us and stand with us and fight the battle with us. We just need to be his hands and feet and declare who he is to the world.
We can't do that if we're worried about what Satan might do. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to stop here. Tomorrow, the um, topic is put on spiritual armor. We'll be looking at Ephesians chapter 6 verses 13 and 14. So until tomorrow, be blessed. Praise God that he is on the throne and that we have no need to fear the wild. to capture us and steal us from God. Stay close to God this day. Focus on Him. Meditate on Him. Meditate on His Word. Be led by His Spirit so that Satan cannot enter your temple, the temple of God, which you are. Thank you for your time. I pray that God God dwells in your spirit fully and overflowing this day in Jesus' mighty name.